Friends, welcome to First Presbyterian Church as we gather in our living rooms, um, maybe even on our porches if today is a gorgeous day. Friends, we want to definitely lift up Darren and his family this day as they work on unpacking and moving their house into this new place. I give thanks to be able to worship with you. I'm Kirk Johnston, by the way. And also wanted to make sure that you guys keep up with your emails to see all the announcements of what's going on in the church. But let us worship together. Let us join in this time where we gather, where we are reminded that God walks with us, whether we are together in the sanctuary or whether we are apart and yet still together. Let us worship this day. Mm hmm. Come join the celebration from your couch, from your porch, from home. For God has called us together to love one another as Christ has loved us. Come join the song, my siblings. We have a companion for the journey. For God will not leave us orphaned. God's spirit sustains us in love. We are a resurrection people. New life is coming. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, in whom we live and move and have our being, help us to choose life in you, that we may keep the commands of Jesus, follow the promptings of the Holy Spirit, and witness to the hope that is within us, sharing Christ's love in the world. Amen.
Siblings, God not only asks us to repent, but also assures us of forgiveness. Therefore, let us confess our sins to one another and to the one who is steadfast love. Loving God, we do not always keep your commandments. We fail to love you. Our conscience is not clear. You call us to love as you have loved, yet we are drawn to judgment and division. Call us once again to the well of living water. Wash us that we might live again through the grace and mercy of Jesus, our resurrected Savior. Amen. Siblings, God forgives, restores, and strengthens us through the risen Christ. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Good morning, everyone, and especially we want to say good morning to our children of the church. One of them's here with us, Isla. But, Isla, we also are talking to Charlie and William and James and Philip and James and Amelia and Jack and all the other kids that might be watching online. We want to say hi. And we brought somebody special with us today. Who's this, Isla? Bunny! He's your bunny? What kind of adventures does he go on with you? Where where do we take him sometimes? A baby river. To the baby river. And when you go to sleep at night, does he ever snuggle with you? Mm -hmm. And just when you're trying, I lay in bed. Mm -hmm. He lays with you while you're in bed. <laughs> Is it nice to have him nearby? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you feel comfort when he's by you? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. What else does he make you feel? I put up his ear. You put up his ear? Yeah. Does he listen to you when you put up his ear? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So today, one of the things that we're learning about is that Jesus loves us so much that Jesus gave us a companion. Kind of like your bunny. A companion is someone who goes with you on the journeys in life. And so, friends... We have a companion from Christ that loves us and cares for us and helps us to be able to journey through life. We give thanks. We give thanks for all the companions. The wiggly wormy ones. The ones who are... <laughs> the ones that want to get down. We give thanks for them all. We give thanks for all of you that are gathered, that are worshiping with us, that have been in the midst of Bible studies, and that have been praying for one another. God calls us to be companions, to love one another with the power of the Holy Spirit. Ayla, can you pray with me? No. Yeah. I'm trying. Okay, repeat after me, all right? Dear Jesus, we love you. We give you thanks for companions like our bunny and like the Holy Spirit. Help us to love one another. Amen. Now may the peace of the, our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all now and forevermore.
siblings in Christ. Listen to these words of scripture coming from the Common English Bible Translation. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day you will know that I am in my Father. You are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. So, in these past weeks, where we have been celebrating, separated, where we have been distancing. As an extra, extrovert, the first phrase that really stood out to me in this scripture for us today that I couldn't get out of my head was, I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. We have all lost something over the past month and a half whether it is getting to be with family outside of our household, certainty about graduation and what it might look like, work as normal or even work entirely, our world has dramatically shifted. Something big has changed. This is where we meet Jesus and his followers, his disciples in the scripture this week. Jesus has already told his disciples that he will be dying soon. And not only will he be dying, but one of their crew will betray him. Judas has already left the upper room and is, and is on his way to get Jesus arrested. Jesus gives the commandment in the upper room to love each other as he has loved us. And he tells Peter that even the rock on which the church will be built will deny him. This is the backdrop of our passage for this, the sixth week of Easter. This sixth week of being people of the empty tomb, of being resurrection people. As Christians, we are people that believe death is not the end. That even in death, life grows out of the grief and the loss. Something new is coming, and we are not alone. Jesus promises a companion. In Greek, Jesus promises a paraclete. Paraclete means one who is called to your side to stand up for us, to explain us in court. Jesus is sending an advocate, a companion, to walk with us in the new world, right by your side. One of the silver linings of being furloughed from my job over a month ago is that I have shift, shifted roles into being a stay-at-home dad while Kate has been on the front lines as a chaplain at the hospital. Isla and I have spent a lot of time exploring the world, whether we are taking walks to see the flower beds in our neighborhood, doing yoga in strangers' driveways, if it was one of yours, 
I'm sorry. Hope you had fun watching us. Playing in the rain. Searching for puddles and learning to use our words for the big emotions that we both are experiencing in this time. Moving into the primary role of caregiver brought new light to what this advocate, this paraclete, this companion is for the disciples in the first century and for us in the time of COVID-19 as I've been companioning with my daughter. The thing that has brought me joy in watching Isla grow and change in this month has been getting to see her get psyched moments. Sometimes she'll get ready and prepared to be brave by a series of action activation points on her body and will touch them all over to get ready. Sometimes it will be the mantra, you can do it, Isla. You can do it. Do it, Isla. And sometimes she needs a song or cheering from her parents to remind her how brave she is. I can only imagine the feeling Christ had as he prepared to leave his followers. Jesus had been their companion as they have dramatically shifted their lives from fishermen tax collectors, zealots, and more. They journeyed together for years, building something new, trying and failing and trying again, often with Christ to help right their way, grabbing their hand as they began to sink after attempting to walk on water. He realized this group of men and women who he had journeyed with on the lake side and on the mountains, needed a companion as they prepare to carry on the ministry of spreading God's loving kingdom. This past week was the beginning of stage two for Indiana, building to what it will mean to be open as a state in a post-COVID-19 world. With the promising promises of opening, it brings many feelings that run the gauntlet from excitement to some sense of being normal, possibly in the future, to fears of resuming gatherings too soon. The disciples who walk this earth with Christ and those of us journeying together virtually are moving into a new world. Going into the new, the unknown and the unfamiliar is always scary and exciting. The good news is we won't be unfamiliar. The good news is we won't be left alone to do it. Just as Jesus strapped on his sandals day after day to walk with and lead his disciples, the paraclete, the advocate, the companion, is coming to journey with us. As we step out onto the water like Peter, as we turn to denial, as we ask for proof, as we learn to trust, as we psych ourselves up, and as we psych ourselves out of the possibilities, we have this unfolding new world before us. Now, it is important that we don't look at this time that we have been through separate yet together just as a break or a pause or delay out of our normal. I pray that we can look at this day at home time as a time in the tomb, a time of challenge, a time of change, a time of growth to prepare us for the resurrection. Resurrection not to what was, but to what is to come. To a new time in our church, in our society, where we realize that we are 
only doing as good as the least among us. Throughout Scripture, we are reminded over and over again to care for the orphan and the widow, the foreigner residing in our country, to restore the marginalized, the isolated, the less fortunate, to the fullness in society. Things will never be the same as they were. Let me say that again. Things will never be the same as they were. And honestly, that is the way that it has always been. It's the way that we experience our children growing up. It's the way graduates experience leaving home to make their own families. It's normal for things to shift and change. And we will not be left as orphans as we go forward. The good news is we are a resurrection people who believe that new life continues to come around. We will have a companion on this journey into what is emerging. And we are called to journey together. Continue to find ways to check in on one another. Make face masks for your less sewing inclined siblings in Christ and for others that you might know. Continue to sponsor a meal for a floor of nurses at Ball Memorial if that is something you are able to do. Whatever you do, act out of love. Not just for our family of faith here, but for all of God's children in Muncie, in Indiana, in the U.S., in all of God's beautiful creation around the world. In the words of my most inspiring advocate in this Easter tide, you can do it, First Pres. Do it. You can do it. You got this, First Pres. Go into this new world, emboldened by the companion. Cheer each other on. Get sight. Love each other as Christ has loved us. Because that is how this new world will see Christ. Amen.
Friends, hear this prayer from a mother on this day. Let us pray together. O oh God, on this day where our nation honors mothers, we come recognizing that it is a day both of joy and of pain for many. For in this time we sit gathered together, your people, varied and diverse in our life experiences. Some who give thanks for the continued gift of life of their mothers. Some who mourn the loss of their mothers or the relationship they never had with them. Some who are remembering years of laughing children. Some who have come with the death of their child so heavy on their heart. Some who are in the midst of frenzy of child rearing, some whose wombs have stayed empty or for whom a busy frenzied life is something they can only dream of, some who will celebrate with their children today, and some who will sit alone and wonder why. Oh God, indeed, you are the one who has mothered us all protecting us like a mother hen, birthing us to new life in the waters of baptism. So whatever feelings we bring on this day, we ask you to walk with us in our joy and our sorrow. For you are the one that walks with us always. And for that, we give thanks and praise. Amen.
Friends, go this day knowing you are not alone, that we have companions for this journey through the Holy Spirit and through the church gathered even as we are dispersed. And hear this message from one of your most precious companions who loves you and will send you on your way. I can do it. You can do it. Who can do it? I can't. Our church? Uh-huh. Say it again. Do it, church. Do it, church. You can do it. I can do it. Can you say love you? Love you. You can do it, church. Thank you.